Hi everyone, my name is Sandiswa and welcome to Tax Shelter where we talk all things tax for small businesses and individuals. I share tax tips, I share ways to reduce your tax, ways to avoid tax, not evade, avoid. Remember, evading is illegal, avoiding, very legal. So I share those kind of tips in this channel. So if you like that type of information or if you've seen some of my videos and you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you can subscribe and also if you like this video at some point then I'd really appreciate it if you can give it a thumbs up it's gonna really help my channel otherwise today we are taking we are talking text for content creations also known as influencers what is deductible what is not deductible how do you go about it so first of all Content creation or the influencing industry is fairly new in our country. Even if it's not new, um, it was it it, it 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 only became recent that people are actually taking it seriously, and people are actually quitting their jobs or people are actually going into the influencing career full time. So, if you are looking for influencer or content creator in the south african income tax act or you are not going to get that word you can google you can do whatever you want you are not going to get it however influencers are recognized as influencers or content creators i'm going to use the words interchangeably and i hope that doesn't offend anyone because some people don't want to be called influencers but yeah anyway so content creators are regarded as freelancers now that is a word that you can get on the income tax aid fortunately so today i'm going to be discussing the deductions that you can get how you go about it with your income what do you need to do and all of that stuff now let us dive into it Firstly, a very important disclaimer that I often forget is that even though I'm a tax practitioner, a registered tax practitioner, this is not tax advice, guys. Because in order to get tax advice, you would have to meet with me personally and I offer services. In fact, not personally, but what I'm trying to say is you would have to, I would have to offer services to you specifically. And in order to do that, I would have to know your specific details about your finances and your income, etc. So this is just general information. It is not tax advice. Very important, right? So this is just used to guide you. You need to take and leave what applies to you. I hope that makes sense. Now, okay, about the light. It's late in the evening and the sun is setting so sorry really i just want to finish shooting the video so please bear with me with the changes in light oh and i also think this is actually beautiful but anyway it's probably gonna go away it's going away now anyway back to the video so that disclaimer is done this is not text advice it's general information if you want tax advice, you are more than welcome to contact me. I will leave my details on the description box. Okay. Now, another thing I need to say, beginning of this video, freelancers, anyone, business owners, people who are going to be deducting expenses, the general rule is that your expenses need to have been incurred in the production of income. In other words, Anything that you used for your personal self cannot be tax deductible, guys. So whatever expenses that you're going to deduct against an income that you are receiving for tax purposes, it has to have been an, an expense that was incurred in the production of income. But as an influencer, you need to register for provisional tax. That is how freelancers are taxed. As provisional taxpayers now with provisional tax you need to submit in August and in February and then you need to submit one annual income tax return 
the reason for this is that freelancers are paid they are um they are the money that they get paid just like content creators it fluctuates right so it is very important to that while you are being paid fluctuating amounts you are able so the size created provisional tax as a way to help you with the cash flow because imagine if you received all this money throughout the year and used most of it and then at the end of the year you have this big tax liability then you would be in trouble which is why then SARS decided okay in June in, in, in August which is six months to the um which is six months into the tax year the tax year remember starts in March so it's March April May June July August so in August it's six months into the tax year you pay the amount what you normally do is you calculate what you've earned in the last five months and then you then use that as an estimate of what you will be earning in the next six months and then you pay your provisional tax by then you sort of have an idea of more or less how your income is going to look but then again obviously in the content creation um world i'm sure it fluctuates it differs and whatnot there are other industries that are like that for instance the fishing industry their income fluctuates according to the weather the climate and all those things so there are many things to consider which is why i would advise you to get a professional to help you with this a professional like myself by the way but anyway but um, so you pay your provisional tax in June. In why do I keep on saying June? In August, and then you pay your provisional tax at the end of the tax season, which is at the end of February. And then after that, you submit your annual income tax return when the tax season starts between July and November. I hope this makes sense. Now, remember. Any income that you earn outside of being a traditional income earner, in other words, if you earn any income other than your salary, then you are supposed to, to register for provisional tax. In other words, if you earn interest, dividends, rental income, this is just a note that I am putting it out there for anyone else that's listening that's not a content creator. If you earn additional income other than your salary, then you need to make sure that you register for provisional tax, right? Very important. Now back to content creators, which expenses can you deduct as a content creator? Okay. One, obviously, all the freelance expenses that people who are freelancers are deducting, and I'm just going to give you a few examples of those because remember, as a content creator, because... This is such a broad term that covers people who do so many things. I mean, there's people who do content for traveling, for clothes. Others create content, um, their kids create content for babies and whatnot. And there's so many things. So that involves, for instance, for children, it involves buying toys and whatnot for their toy hauls. You know, so there's just so many things involved. So I'm, I would never be able to cover all the expenses because there's different content creators in different industries and they incur different expenses. So I'm going to cover the general expenses. If you have any expenses that you're thinking of and you're in the content creation industry and you think people we should know about it, then please, you are more than welcome to drop them into the comment section. Okay, and also if you have any topic that you would like me to cover, then you are more than welcome to drop that in the comment section. Right. Okay. First um, expense. Well, I'm looking down because I've written notes so that I can make sure that I cover everything. Right. So I'm looking at my book. Home office expenses. Very, very, very important because this is usually the biggest expense. If you have a, a room in your home that you are using for content creation, for instance, a studio that you are using, for instance, my office here. It's in my home. So I use this for shooting my videos. Then I'd be able to deduct the expenses that are associated with this space. But then what is very important with the home office expenses, 
One, you need to make sure that your office is exclusively used for your business. In other words, for content creation. In other words, it cannot be a storage, it cannot be a bedroom or your kitchen and whatnot. It must be exclusively used for content creation. I know it sounds a bit unfair because as content creators, sometimes you create content in your bedroom because you don't have any other room. But that, unfortunately, that's how it works. And the reason for this is that, remember, sometimes you'll find that people will take, for instance, their bedroom and then want to deduct that expense for their bedroom. But I mean, you're using that as your bedroom and you, in, in other words, you are using it for personal use as well. So it has to be exclusively used for the business, right? And one of the things that you, look, you need to look out for is that when you are submitting your home office expenses, 99% of the time, especially after COVID, because a lot of people are working from home, SARS requires a 360 degrees picture of your home if you're going to be submitting for home office, home office expenses. So they want to see. So if in your bedroom, you have a little corner that has a desk and you're saying that you want to claim for home office expenses, that's not going to work at all because SARS requires pictures of your 360. I've heard people would do shady things like remove things from the room and then put a desk and then do a 360. I wouldn't advise people to do that, but people do it anyway. But remember, exclusive use of that space, be it your studio where you're shooting your videos, be it your studio where you're shooting your content like I'm doing right now, exclusive use is important, right? Now next rental expenses again content creators rent spaces all the time they rent spaces for photo shoots sometimes you have to rent equipment yes sometimes you have to rent equipment and so all those rentals that you are using are tax deductible for as long as you are using it for your content creation business not business not for personal very important Cell phone expenses. Now with this one, it's tricky. And the tricky part is that it's very difficult in most cases to prove personal use to business use. So I would advise if you're a content creator and you are starting to make a substantial amount of money and you are using your cell phone a lot. In other words, if your phone it forms a big part of your content creation, then it would be advisable to get a separate cell phone for business. This is something I would advise because it becomes very difficult to prove your personal use to the business use when SARS wants you to prove. To prove. So it would be advisable to just get an extra phone, especially if you are making, if you're a full-time content creator and you are making a substantial amount of income, then get a new cell phone for business. And then in that case, when you want to claim, then you're just going to claim the whole amount because it's for your business purposes only. Again, even then, SARS will always require proof, right? Cell phone done. Business travel, very important. Content creators are traveling all the time whether to shoots to clients to events to they're just always traveling i know a content creator that i like very much that is always traveling she said the other time that in fact so many times she said that she travels to cape town in order to shoot content you need to keep the proof keep the proof guys do a travel log book because without it you can't claim for travel. It says they refuse. About phony, they don't budge. It doesn't happen. Keep those Uber receipts, um, bus receipts, receipts, plane tickets, all those things, guys. Just keep them. And very important with the receipts, guys, over time, they fade. So you need to make sure that you scan and keep in a folder. Scan, keep in a folder because over time, they fade. And it's been a huge problem because when they faded, SARS can't do anything about them. And you can't prove that it's actually what you are saying it is. So travel, very important. You need to keep proof. 
very important. In fact, for all the deductions that you are sending to science, you need to make sure that you keep proof. Also, guys, with your deductions, if you are unsure about something, then it's better to consult with a professional rather than keep on deducting all sorts of things. And then the next thing, you also have money, there's penalties and all kinds of things. Very important. And also, content creation, I regard it as informal side of careers like entertainers and whatnot stars is coming for him. in fact i know you must have seen in the news so many celebrities that go uh because now they're having trouble with stars so make sure that you get your ducks in the row while you're starting get a professional when you start making a bit of money when those um sponsorships start coming in invest in a professional guys just run everything by that professional if you want that professional i'm available i'm that professional i know what i'm doing i've been doing it for a very long time and i am registered so just get a professional so that you don't end up being one of those people that is in the headlines for not paying taxes and unfortunately SARS doesn't accept ignorance as a as a a reason now for not paying taxes they just come with penalties and they start repossessing your assets and whatnot so important just get a professional to help you other expenses that you can use are you can deduct are your agency fees i know with most content creators they have agencies you can deduct bank charges um, because i'm sure there's lots of transactions that go through your bank account because of the many things that you're doing traveling buying and don't don't and don't don't and don't don't so i'm sure lots and lots of bank charges those are deductible as well as marketing fees if you have to market yourself be it on instagram or wherever or you have a sponsorship and then you have to market in order to reach your targets all those things they are deductible right so that's all on content creation of me. I think I'm going to do another video for content creators. This is now to actually give you um, some options that are available for you when you want to formalize your business. Because this thing of deducting the expenses yourself and doing all of that, it's actually, um, it's informal and it's a lot of admin. So I'm going to do another video on what you can do in order to formalize your business i'm sorry about the light guys like i said it's it's the sun it's it's setting so but anyway i'm done now and yes if you're happy if you liked this video if you got some kind of information that you didn't know about then please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel also share this video if you can i'd really appreciate that Thank you very much. I will see you on my next video. Okay.